Okay, so these are hair crayons. All right, they're just like chalk with a wax base. You just draw with them. Once they dry, they don't smear, okay? So we're gonna do a little bit of color in the base of her tail here. For longer hair, you just hold the hair. Draw it. I know, I know, right? What are you doing to my butt and stuff back there? I'm gonna mix the pink and the orange and then I'm gonna brush it so it'll kind of be faded. If you brush it while it's wet, it blends. Once it dries, it stays in place, right? You can see that? Okay. And this washes off in one bath. When mom gets tired of it, it's gonna come off in one bath. Okay. Now, I could charge three to five dollars to add a little bit of color like that, okay? I could also, can I see your face? She's got the pretty little strap up her face. Come here. She's a very good girl, isn't she? So this is how fast you can add a little bit of color. Yes, this lady right here is letting us use her. And I'm gonna, since we added a little bit of orange to the tail, since this spot right here is wider, we're gonna do a little bit of orange by the pink. Just cause I like multicolors. Girl. And like right here, she doesn't like the brush on her face. I mean, you can take your finger so that while it's wet, it'll smear and blend. She said, uh, Mom, thank you. You are fast. Okay. Really quick. Now, we're going to give her some earrings and some face bling. So like I said, I would charge, you know, $5 to add a little bit of color. I charge $3 for bling in my shop for like earrings. This is how fast you can make three dollars. See, I told y'all I can do three dogs in 15 minutes. Put a little drop of tacky glue. This is just Aileen's tacky glue. You get it at the craft store. I have it at my booth. Um, it's non-toxic. It's water soluble, so it'll wash off when she gets a bath. Let's see if I can. Little earrings. Okay, I charge three dollars for that. Almost every dog that comes in my shop that has shaved ears, tipped ears, or already short hair, like my Shelties, uh, my Yorkies, my Westies, my Schnauzers, if they're females, almost all of them pay for earrings now. That's three bucks a dog to stick two rhinestones on. You can also... We have the little smaller ones here. This was actual face bling, so we're going to go down the face with it. And I'm actually gonna do this on one of the, these little guys, too. Hey, Ladybug. I should have asked her name before I borrowed her, because I could have brought a little Ladybug bling. I had some. <laughs> I mean, this is simple. Just a little drop on the back. I'm sexy and I know it. That's what she says. Okay, so I charge three to five dollars for bling. The face I would charge for, the ears I would charge for, adding a little bit of color I would charge for. Upcharges. There's no sense in doing a bunch of extra dogs a day. You can just color up and bling the ones you already have. And since she already has a feather, I'm gonna do a feather in one of these guys. Like she's just like, I got this. You could also, like right here. Actually, right here, I could do like, make a flower.
could do like a flower. If I'd have had the green, I could go down the, we'll give it a black stem. Okay, you're fine, you're fine. So now she's got a flower on her foot. I mean, these, they're really versatile and they're really easy. And kindergartners could actually use these. I sell these to customers for their kids to go home and draw on the dogs. I sell a lot of what I call pet twos, where I dye stuff on, like the dogs that get shaved down, I'll dye a picture on the back. I have some customers now that they have me just dye the black outline and the kids keep them colored up at home. It's a really neat idea. It's also very good for fundraising. I have a friend with a uh, white pit, and we dye him all up. And we take him to the fundraiser, and we let people paint the pit to show him, you know, how horribly mean he is and stuff. So, easy, easy money. Let's go for the next dog. Oh, okay. These are Wren's dogs. Y'all need to go by the booth and tell them their dogs need to be groomed. I just walked by this morning and seen them sitting there and thought, yeah, I'll go steal those guys after a while. I need to brush you. You're at a grooming show. We have to be brushed. Okay, we're gonna pretend this is a freshly groomed dog. Do I have good imaginations? Okay. Wear this, because I don't trust you. All right. So on this one, we sold mom a Mardi Gras feather. Yay! All right. So we have a little feather. I don't know how many of y'all know how feathers go in, but oh, you have little metal crimp beads. And this has a hook on the end. She's gonna slide the bead on there. We're gonna decide where we want it. I'm gonna put it right behind the ear. I don't know, I can put it right in front of the ear on her. If the placement's not perfect, forgive me, I'm behind the dog. I'm just taking a little strand of hair and I'm gonna twist it, okay? Take this little hook. I'll hook that hair I just twisted and slide this bead down. My finger, so it's on the hair, okay? Slide the feather in the crimp bead. Stay about a quarter of an inch away from the skin because you don't wanna pinch the dog. And then you just smash that crimp bead with the pliers. and it's there. To get it out, you smash the bead the other direction and it comes back out. She's asking if I actually made that feather. Yes, I make the feathers. I sell loose, loose feathers and I sell pre-made feathers. So some people like to make their own. I start with one and I just keep layering it until it's, I do. I do, um, I, I leave one to go through the crimp bead and the other ones I cut the tips off and I just keep layering the feathers. I use regular low temp hot glue gun to make my feathers. Okay. okay, so we gave her the feather. Let's see here. We're gonna do blow pin on her. So I don't know how many of you have seen a blow pin before. It's a marker with a mouthpiece, okay? Another temporary color. Take the marker out, you flip it over. This is the mouthpiece. And you just blow the color on, okay? If I was doing like a stencil design, I would put the stencil down and just blow. If I'm doing longer hair and I just blow this, the color is gonna go everywhere, right? Her tail's tangled. She's at a grooming show and her tail is tangled. Ren is bad, he has a tangled dog. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, since I have the longer hair, she'll sit still, I'm gonna put my slicker brush under this hair so it's holding it in place. Oh, what are you doing back there? Blow and brush. Blow and brush. And I'm gonna flip it over. And again. Let go of my tail. I'm sorry, I have to. Y'all can see she's got it curled up. Yeah. There we go. 
And I just did the tip since she's not wanting her tail messed with. I could also do like her little pom poms and you can blend colors with it. We could have done like a brighter one up above it. I don't know if she has enough hair for Swartzkis or not. We're gonna try it. These are Swartzki crystals. They're on a little um, threader and they have little tiny rubber bands on them. Okay, so they're on the little threader, got little bands. On these, just put your finger in the threader. It's almost like a needle threader. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of hair right above her eyes. Try to do it from behind. I don't know how still this one's gonna sit for me. Yeah, I don't know. She may not have enough hair. We'll do it to the side. Normally I use these when I'm doing like pull-ups and I'm trying to keep the short hairs, but they've really hacked her bangs there. So I've got a section of hair. I've got my fingers through my little loop. Hang on to the hair. Slide the loop down onto the hair. Slide the bead up. When it gets up to the hair, you grab the bead, pull the hair through. That's little rhinestones. Like I said, if you were doing like the hair here, trying to hold it up, you could do them like across the front and it holds the hair up and they got all the bling. And these stay in for weeks with these little bands. You can reuse them. You can reuse them, you can take right here. Just hold against it. It's because like I said, it's just got the little band and pull it out and you can put them back on the threader. Okay. Let's do the poodle. This one's not want me to touch her face much, so we'll do the poodle. This one's gonna get the lashes. Okay. Now normally, I didn't bring scissors up here with me, but normally on a dog this small, I would cut the lashes down so they're not so big. She's gonna have really big lashes. Because I didn't bring scissors. You have some scissors? All right. Don't you go anywhere. All right. Let me see. I'm just gonna kinda hold this up to measure how much I need to cut off. I'm taking from the center of the eyelash. I'm gonna cut this other one down to match. What I'm doing is I'm gonna hold them up against each other. That way I know I get the same amount cut off of each one. Now I keep the pieces normally that I cut off because technically the pieces I'm cutting off I could use for a dog her size. All right. She's like, don't touch me. I don't know who you are, lady. All right. You take the bottom of your eyelash. The tacky glue, again, I don't use eyelash glue because there's two reasons. A lot of eyelash glue has latex in it. Dogs are just like people. They can be allergic. You don't want somebody's dog's eyes swelling up. And eyelash glue has to have a remover. You don't want to get it in the eyes. The tacky glue is non-toxic and you can wash it off, okay? And no latex. So I'm just gonna put a little strip of the tacky glue. Now the trick to the lashes is, where the bling you just stick on and walk away. With the lashes you kinda have to keep poking the corners down until it tacks because they wanna go flat on you. Let's see if I can do this from behind. I'm gonna, uh. Don't touch me! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hold the hair back and I'm gonna go right here on this natural crease above her eye. Again, I'm gonna work that corner. See how the corner's trying to stick up? I'm just gonna keep working that little corner down. I'm just gonna hold it for a few minutes and that way it doesn't pop straight back up. She's asking if the fast grab would work good. Yeah, Aileen's Tacky Glue, the bottle I have, they also make one that's called a fast grab. They make one also that's a quick tack and they would, they grab a little faster, they're thicker. I use this one because it's kind of universal for everything, but I do have the, that would probably work. I'll turn it around this way.
It's much easier when you're not standing behind the dog. What are you coming at me with? Okay, I'm going to have to turn her around this way. Turn this way. You were fighting me and I pulled that one off. There. Yeah, the dogs are usually calmer when you're coming from the front of them. And again, I'm just gonna hold it for a second. And it's it's almost like where that the bone is here. You just almost like when you do snails or eyebrows, you know, just kinda keep with that. Now I put tacky glue all the way across, but you hold the, the ends because the dog's eye curves so much tighter than ours that you know they're wanting to stick out, so you have to get that eyelash to curve. She just asked how long it usually stays on the dog. It usually lasts until they get a bath. Unless you have a dog that's really, really, really a face rubber. Okay, I pulled this one off when I leaned over. Be still, be still. Quit touching me, lady. You are not my mommy and I don't like you. I hear it every day, honey, I know. I'm trying to straighten them up here. Here we go. I'm gonna add a touch more glue to the corner of this one because it is not wanting to stay down. The shorter the hair is where you're putting it, the better it'll glue. Because what I'm having to do is kind of glue the tip of the hair down too. You look gorgeous. Now I'm gonna show you another trick with the hair crayons because she's got the lashes, right? She needs the blush, you think? <laughs> so now we're gonna, oh my God. this gets better. We take our crayon. Oh. <laughs> You're not my mommy. <laughs> what are you doing? You're making me look like a clown. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> now, now, don't make me tell you what I tell the customers. I like the story. <laughs> she licks her butt in public. She's not embarrassed. <laughs> and it's not a clown. That's not what we were going for. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, she said I don't want lipstick. No? But we have it on one side. Just blah, blah. Oh. She's much better when she's looking at me. I think I missed her eyelash up. There we go. And on the eyelashes, like I said, you want to make sure they stick. It's if you're they're facing you, you don't want to like keep. I keep running my hands across them and pulling them off before they dry. At the shop, I would have just left her loop on and I would have put those on and not messed my hands around them. I'd have went and done her toenails or something. It is completely non-toxic. You can use this on cats. They're gonna eventually lick it off, but when I first got my first shipment in, my vet has like eight cats at his clinic and they all got face makeup and stuff like that. He was so impressed. And I'm just gonna, just because she's got all that, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little face bling on her. I've already opened it. She needs it. And yes, the proper way to open your glue is to put it in your mouth and open it with your teeth. In case any of you were wondering. All right, any questions on any of this stuff? And I was gonna show you too, you can do the regular lashes as well. They don't have to be as extreme. These are really adorable as well.